Well, obviously, I like being the centre of attention. <laughs> this is my first time I saw Chris Perry, so hopefully he liked it. He's never won for anything either. Yeah, I fully need to look. Now I'm sort of thinking, oh my god, I don't know. I don't think it was good enough. Do you know what I mean? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Reality. Yeah. Terrible shock. I'm Louise. Um, and I'm Ben. And we go to Central St Martins and we're on Fashion Knit. We're currently at Grayson's studio because um, we've just presented to him our design for the Chancellor's gown. The concept was kind of like fun, humorous, um, but with a traditional take on the Chancellor's robe. Um, but also with personal elements of you in it. That's um, right. thing that we knew that you explored a lot was masculinity. So um, we've got up here um, like a penis punch card. So like, when you stretch it, they're little kind of penis. Um, we wanted to make it cycle friendly. <laughs> Good point. So, yes, yeah, so you made um, it in wool. Like the traditional, <laughs> the traditional, I mean that's where the word peloton comes from, it's ball of wool. Wool and grillo. Had the idea of being able to roll, to fold this um, train in and then roll it up and then so you can tie it behind the boat. <laughs> so you can cycle. So you can just have it in place as well. like. I can just see, yeah. Uh, so yeah, okay. I can see <laughs> the, the interface between this and a so wing mirror. Right. I'm Keith, um, I'm from Central St Martins. We are at Grayson Perry's studio. It's quite ecclesi ecclesiastical. Kind of, yeah, I'd say. I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> let's not say quite, let's say very. <laughs> I think you responded really well. So you see me as a kind of priest? Yeah, creativity. I don't know. <laughs> priest of creativity. <laughs> I think he liked kind of the breeziness of it. It looks it's relatively nice cool because this yeah, is a, a July-based yeah. garment. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, quite. Very lightweight is what I wanted and to go for, even with the crown. My swatch was um, ten different colours of organza and they were cut into strips and sewn together. And then it's um, six layers of the organza to kind of make it opaque. From this, on, you're looking at this, are we looking at something that, because it's quite... It's quite complicated, it's but... labour intensive, I guess. Because of all the strips. Yeah, and organs are not the easiest material to work with. So it's a lot of like sewing in straight lines, so it's not too difficult, it's just kind of time consuming. So here it can look quite sort of modern, and stained glass windowy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the danger is when it comes to be made, it looks quite hippie. You have, yeah, and you okay. have to make sure that you get the grain exactly right. I think it's course, very much yeah. like quilting, because mm -hmm. if quilting is done in a wonky way, it's really yeah. horrible. But it's all, yeah, I mean, making-wise, this is quite a task, I'd say. So I think that may have been something they were hesitant about. My name is Hattie Rees, but in art world, I call myself Luna Blue. I go to Central St Martins and I do women's wear. I wanted to create a character for him. And I had this idea that you would just have, like, a massive, almost, like, mountainous, but very lightweight cage hat thing with a, with a strap underneath your chin. But then I sort of abandoned that idea. <laughs> and I've got a better idea now. <laughs> I think if he wants to look fun. The Koi Cop wooden clocks. Beautiful. So you'd have white um, nylon leggings and they would have this sort of embroidery on them. And it's just kooky and fun, I think. Feet are the fish in the water. Your legs are the, the roots and the vines coming up. Definitely, when I was doing it, I was imagining him wearing it. And then you'd have the layer, a layer over the top of this gold, um, in which you would, the whole skirt would be covered in these cherry blossom flowers with obviously embroidery in the center. Oh yeah, he loves the bag. The hair would actually be like a plastic mould based on a traditional mortar board, you know, the, the centre of the mortar board and then you've got the flat bit. Right. It would be like a plastic mould like that and then it would be plas pink plastic that comes out into a big, sort of looks like a wig but it's actually a hat and then you'd have a plastic cherry blossom here as well. My name is Quinn, I study CSM, fashion print, second year. Concept date, blooming moment. Okay. Blooming moment, okay. I love flowers. So the flowers are embroidered on. I, I did laser cutting first and um, 
cut like each flower pieces and stitch, hand stitch them together. That's my favorite thing. These are nice, aren't they? Did you make them? Yes. I really? Yeah, these are laser cut for I love one. the flowers. I think that's really Yeah, good. I like the way the flowers, yeah. that, I mean, that works on the print very nicely, yeah. doesn't it? Very it's, good. Yeah, okay. And that's this good. It's all flowers, like I made it. Right. Fantastic. Different mm. sewing together. He's very funny, I think, and I love her. I love his laughing. <laughs> As you saw this. <laughs> you should be a politician. <laughs> <laughs> like a very, sh very loud. Oh yeah, you have a blues pop. Thank you all for your great work, and you both put a lot of effort in and uh, I'm really flattered that you want to do this. The person I've chosen uh, to design the robes is... Keith. Why I've chosen you is you have fulfilled the brief. It's relatively cool. It looks like a chancellor's robe. There's a few, there's a lot of tweaking we need to do. And also it's going to look good on stage. Well done Keith. Yay. Really excited. Um, I'm excited to see just kind of the drawing come to life and really work with Grayson and Sonia to make it a reality. The brown one was, that was kind of like a pre twall mm -hmm. um, and that was based on um, Grayson's measurements. Um, and from there, we adjusted the length to fit him, um, also to adjust um, for the height of his heels that he'll be wearing. And so we've done a black, another one in black, and then the gray one, this will represent the organza layers that are going on top. So I'll do three of these. I would say probably the biggest challenge is uh, juggling it with my current projects. From my course mates I get a lot of, um, I can't believe you're doing another project, I can't imagine doing that right now. <laughs> like I knew it was going to be a lot of time, but there's, a, it's a lot. Done a lot of twalls. But I've really enjoyed working with Grayson and um, doing something different as well. It's really good to finally start the final piece, seeing it come together, but also encountering kind of laying the colors out and seeing which colors work. We're finally getting a gauge of how long it's gonna take. It's also been quite interesting to work with silk. It's very, very expensive. It's technical. It's just a, a question of being very precise with the cutting because it's all straight strips and they have to be very, very straight. So it's like very much about making sure before you make that cut See? that everything's right. It's very much like quilting and patchwork. It has to be well cut and then very precisely sewn. I'm sandwiching the organza between paper and on the top layer, um, I have the stripes measured and drawn on. It's pinned, like hundreds of pins. We're using a rotary wheel so that the fabric doesn't move when you're cutting. The reason I did not decide to knit it was because it was summer and we wanted something cool. But then I also thought, oh, it's gonna take ages if we knit it. This is probably taking just as long, but it'll be nice and cool. I have the amazing technicians. Joan and Charlie, who are doing all the French seams and helping me with cutting the stripes because there's, there's hundreds. Since the beginning I've had a schedule, but even then when you have a strict schedule that you're following, it doesn't always go to plan. This would not exist on my own and it certainly wouldn't exist in the time frame. And so I have these people helping me and I'm really fortunate to, to have that. 
we've kept it quite quiet, so I think it'll be a nice surprise. It's gone brilliantly today because, you know, one thing I've learned from, uh, obviously, as my job is turning imaginary ideas into uh, the reality, you know, and that process can often have many bumps in it. And I often describe my own practice as uh, an exercise in controlled disappointment. But, you know, this has been really good, you know, because it's the, Keith and co and everybody involved in it has kept it the standard high and it looks fantastic, you know, in many ways better than we hope. So. I feel like a living stained glass window. It's amazing. Such a relief um, to know what it looks like on Grayson, see how it falls, because it's, I mean, even having it on the form, kind of at Grayson's height, but seeing it actually on Grayson is completely different and, and even better. Yeah, I hope I've set a precedent, not just for the chancellors in this university, but in all universities. Take that on board. Because I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a lovely way of getting the students involved. And because when, you know, when I'm up on the stage, you know, people will feel a sense of uh, ownership of it. In the midst, it's quite, it was quite stressful. Um, but now that it's done, it's something I'm really, really glad that I did. It was something, it's something that's really special that, that, will be in my portfolio, something, a story that I can say that I've done. Yeah, I couldn't have hoped for anything better. I'm really looking forward to trying out my new robes by Keith Toby because, you know, I really like being a one-man church. You know, when I, when I tend to do a project, we, you know, we show it at a crit, um, but you never really see it in action. Um, so to see it being worn, seeing it, you know, that all the function was functioning. The gowns is something that's quite traditional and there's a lot of history to it. We were really breaking tradition with this um, in a way, so to see it in this very formal environment was really interesting. Um, a really great contrast, but it fit, it fit in really well and there was something quite formal about it. I mean, I was so excited on, I think it was Tuesday that it released and I was like, oh, I kept looking online. Um, I went and got the Evening Standard when it came out, flipped through it, saw it, and it was so, it was so exciting. We definitely kept it a secret. Really nice unveiling. I'm wearing robes designed by one of your number, by Keith Toby from Central St. Martin's. Give him a name. So really good, really good reception. I mean, my mom is like posting on all of her like social media and sending email blasts to her co-workers. It's really funny. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for kind of, uh, seeing something in the design um, and trusting me to create something that's quite special and quite important for him. Congratulations. Thank you.